What is up, everybody? Aaron Smith here, Fertile Valley Ministries. Uh, very grateful and, and, and humbled to come before you. Uh, we're going to start it off in Jeremiah 17, verse 9. It says, The heart is deceitful above all things and beyond cure. Who can understand it? The heart of man is wicked. With that in mind, this video is by no means an attempt to, to compare one man's you know, so-called righteousness to another. Uh, Romans 3.10 says, There is no one righteous, not even one. In, in light of this truth, I feel compelled and led to address man's wickedness through the lens of the prosperity gospel. Before I continue... Uh, I want to be clear that there is nothing wrong with the material blessings of God. There is no sin in how much you make. But there is sin in how much you keep. There is no sin in how much you make, but rather the sin is found in how much you keep. First, let me lay the foundation uh, you know, for this message. Matthew 22, there's three scriptures. Matthew 22 uh, starting at verse 37. Love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind. This is the first and greatest commandment. And the second is like it. Love your neighbor as yourself. And if you want to know, you know, who's our neighbor, uh, read the parable of the Good Samaritan, Luke 10. All right. Uh, second scripture, Matthew 7. Jesus says, so in everything, do to others what you would have them do to you. For this sums up the law and the prophets. Thirdly, 1 John 3, 16, this is how we know what love is. Jesus Christ laid down his life for us, and we ought to lay down our lives for our brothers. If anyone has material possessions and sees his brother in need, but has no pity on him, how can the love of God be in him? Dear children, let us not love with words or tongue, but with actions and in truth. That's not the type of verse we hang on our walls, is it? We can never underestimate the wickedness of the heart of man and in that the pull of culture. This wickedness has enabled us to, to, to rationalize our lifestyles, our dreams, our aspirations, having, having no concern whatsoever for our brothers around the world or even in our own city. And in this rationalization, we have twisted and distorted the Holy Word of God. What if I told you that there are nearly 2 billion people in this world that have never heard the gospel? What if I told you that more than 30,000 people die of starvation every day? And most of those are children under the age of 5. 30,000 people a day. And we're worried about the size of our house, the fanciness of our cars, and, and, and the, the accomplishing of our, our self-centered dreams, while our neighbors are starving, dying, and going to hell. If anyone has material possessions and sees his brother in need, but has no pity on him, how can the love of God be in him? The very essence of evil is to pursue satisfaction outside of God. And let's not kid ourselves, we all pursue satisfaction outside of God. Do you treasure Christ or do you treasure what He can give you? The definition of evil can be found in, in uh, Jeremiah 2, uh, starting at verse 12. It says, Be appalled at this, O heavens, and shudder with horror, declares the Lord. My people have committed two sins. They have forsaken me, the spring of living water, and have dug their own cisterns, broken cisterns that cannot hold water. To paraphrase, here is Christ, the fountain of living water. And here is us turning our backs and trying to find pleasure licking dirt. What if I told you that Jesus said, watch out. Be on your guard against all kinds of greed. A man's life does not consist in the abundance of his possessions. A man's life does not consist in how much dirt he licks. A man's life does not consist in the abundance of his possessions. So why are we so concerned with them? I'm sorry to break this to you guys, but Scripture doesn't tell us to be like Solomon or Abraham. Scripture tells us to be like Jesus. We're so concerned with possessions. Jesus says, you know, he'll give me what I ask for in his name. Yes, absolutely. Amen. 
But realize in Jesus' name means being consistent with the character of Jesus. The same Jesus that said in everything, do unto others what you would have them do unto you. People who want to get rich fall into temptation and into a trap and into many foolish and harmful desires that plunge men into ruin and destruction. For the love of money is a root of all kinds of evil. Some people eager for money have wandered from the faith and pierced themselves with many griefs. Now the deceitfulness of wealth and the wickedness of the heart of man will tell us that, that we're immune to that danger. We are not immune to that. We are not immune to that. Okay, Aaron, you've rambled on and on. What, what, what are you trying to tell me? I'm trying to tell you that your life is not your own. That, that you were bought at a price. I'm trying to tell you that, that giving one-tenth of your income and one-seventh of your days doesn't fulfill your obligation as a Christian. I'm trying to tell you that, that God has not called us to live in luxury and indifference. He has called us to love Him, love one another, and go and make disciples of all nations. And I'm trying to tell you that, that if you want to take hold of the life that is truly life, be rich towards God and not towards yourself. We, we must start treating Christ a, as our most precious treasure. Is your satisfaction found in Him or in what you want from Him? Christ must be our greatest delight. We need to start acting like we serve a risen Savior. And, th and that's what this is all about. Christ was crucified and He raised from the dead. He conquered sin and death. The Apostle Paul says, if, if the dead are not raised in Christ, let us eat, drink, and be merry, for tomorrow we die. It is absolutely heartbreaking to me, knowing that so many people within the church are living like there is no eternity. Spending, you know, our, our money and our time hoarding earthly riches and seeking temporal pleasures. The, the Christian life is, is, isn't about, is not about denying pleasure. It's just about seeking your pleasure in Christ and knowing that He will fill you with joy in His presence and at His right hand are pleasures forevermore. Psalm 1611. I am saved through, through the blood of Christ. I am saved by grace alone, through faith alone. And for everyone that can say that, we got to stop living like this world is our home. You don't prepare for a one-week vacation on a cruise like you're going to, 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 to be on the ship for the rest of your life. So why are we treating our earthly lives like there's no eternity? And I'm getting ready to close, leave you with, with Jesus' words, Matthew 6, 19-24. Do not store up for yourselves treasures on earth where moth and rust destroy and where thieves break in and steal. But store up for yourself treasures in heaven where moth and rust do not destroy, and where thieves do not break in and steal. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. The eye is the lamp of the body. If your eyes are good, your whole body will be full of light. But if your eyes are bad, your whole body will be full of darkness. If then the light within you is darkness, how great is that darkness? No one can serve two masters. Either he will hate the one and love the other, or he will be devoted to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve both God and money. Just read it. Quit, quit letting what, what you have learned and, and what you desire dictate what you're going to believe. Contrary to popular belief, the American dream is diametrically opposed to this. Just read it. Here is, here is truth. Here is truth. And I pray that, that through this truth, you will take hold of the life that is truly life. For as Paul says, for to me, to live is Christ and to die is gain. Let's live like it. Your boy A. Smith, Fertile Valley Ministries, reminding you, I ain't always going to be on the mountaintop. But with Jesus, the valley is fertile. See y'all next time.